Hello boys and girls, welcome to our vodcast on asexual reproduction. Now there's two different ways that an organism can reproduce. They can either do it sexually or asexually. And today we're going to talk about the characteristics and types of asexual reproduction. So first of all, let's go over the three characteristics of asexual reproduction. First of all, the number of parents involved is only one parent. So you can only have a single parent in asexual reproduction. Second, the offspring must be genetically identical to that of the parent, which means the baby has the same exact DNA and genes as the parent does. This is different from us as humans because you have half of your mom's genes and half of your dad's genes, so you're a mix of the two. You're not genetically identical to either one of them. And then third, since there is only one parent involved, there's no use of sex cells such as sperm and egg cells. Okay, so there's no fertilization going on there. There are four different types of asexual reproduction methods that we're going to discuss today. They are mitosis in the cell cycle, fission, budding, and regeneration. Mitosis in the cell cycle occurs when the nucleus divides, creating a genetically identical nucleus. And because the nucleus will be genetically identical to that of the original nucleus, the new cell is going to be genetically identical to that of the original cell. So this occurs in organisms that have nuclei in their cells, and we call those eukaryotic cells, if you may remember from earlier this year. So if you take a look at this diagram at the bottom, here we have our parent cell. This is the original cell that the cell division starts from. And here's the DNA that's going to be used. Well, as we learned through the process of mitosis, the DNA gets replicated into these chromatid pairs, each half of these X's, and eventually over time, when the chromatid pairs line up, they get yanked apart, and then the DNA gets put into two separate nuclei in the process of telophase here. So as you can see, we're going to have the same combination of genes in this nucleus as we do in that nucleus. And as a result, we have two genetically identical nuclei, and as cytokinesis occurs and splits the cytoplasm, we're going to end up with two genetically identical cells. Okay, so through the cell cycle, we get two cells that are made, and because of mitosis inside the cell cycle, or within the cell cycle, we have genetically identical nuclei that are formed. Okay, so that's mitosis in the cell cycle. Now, the other type of cellular sexual reproduction we have is called fission. Now, we talked about fission earlier this year with bacteria, and basically what bacteria do is that they split in two, creating two identical cells. So by definition, Fission occurs as the DNA replicates and the cell divides into two genetically identical cells. And this occurs in organisms that are called prokaryotic cells. Now prokaryotes, remember, are cells that don't have a nucleus. Here, in the eukaryotic cell, you can see that the genetic material is encased in a nucleus, this bubble here. However, the DNA is floating freely inside of the cell. So in step one here, fission, we have the original DNA on the left here replicating and making its copy. And as a result, that DNA is going to be split because the new cell needs its set of DNA and the old cell needs to keep its set of DNA. So once the DNA is separated to opposite ends of the cell, the cytoplasm is going to start to pinch off and then separate the cell into two different cells. Because this daughter or new cell received its DNA, which is a copy of the DNA of the parent cell, these two cells are going to be genetically identical, and as a result, we're going to have asexual reproduction there. That's cellular asexual reproduction. However, organisms that are made of more than one cell can undergo asexual reproduction. And here are a couple ways that non-plant organisms can do that. First of all, the first part I want to talk about is budding. Budding occurs when the offspring grows from the body of the parent organism. So, to put into context, think about this. Imagine you're sitting here, and all of a sudden, a miniature version of you starts growing on your shoulder and it looks exactly like you it's just like one-tenth the size and eventually at some point in your life that mini version of you will eventually separate itself from your body and just kind of run off and then live its own life and mature into an adult well that's what happens in some of these organisms and a couple of the organisms that budding occurs in are called yeast or hydra now yeast is located up here in the upper left hand corner and it's a fungus so what you have here is you have a yeast cell, a parent yeast cell, actually starting to create a bud. So this bud here is going to eventually turn into the offspring that will pinch off and then separate itself from the parent and then 
develop into a mature yeast cell. Now if we take a look at the bottom right hand corner here, we have an organism called a hydra. And the hydra is actually an aquatic creature that lives in the water and anchors itself down and it just kind of floats in the current of the water and, and it uses its tentacles here to catch food and then it stuffs that food down into his mouth and it digests it and so forth. But if you take a look at the bottom part of the hydra, here's where the budding is occurring. This is actually a baby hydra that's developing and growing off the parent hydra. And one day this baby hydra is going to separate itself and mature into an adult hydra. So let's take a look, a quick look as to how this looks like when it happens. Okay, so that's the process of budding. The last process I want to talk about is called regeneration. Now, regeneration occurs when an offspring grows and develops from a piece or develops from pieces of the parent. So what essentially happens is the parent actually loses a piece of itself, and that piece can actually turn into a brand new organism. And one of the famous creatures that are known for this are the sea stars. So if you've ever gone to a tropical place, gone snorkeling, gone scuba diving, or even just walked on the beach and saw one of these sea stars wash up, you know, sometimes they look nice and symmetrical where they have five legs that are the same size. However, sometimes you get weird looking sea stars that look like this. Okay, so this sea star obviously has three normal sized legs, but then it has these really short legs here. Well, what happened was these legs got ripped off by something or they lost these legs somehow. But the cells inside the sea star are able to tell the cells at the site of injury to actually regenerate and create brand new legs. So what we see here are two brand new legs starting to grow and develop. All right, so regeneration can be used for repair but if you take a look down here, you have this really weird looking sea star that has four little legs and one like massive long leg. Well, here's the story behind this. What happened was at some point in time, this leg or this piece here was attached to an adult sea star. And again, it got ripped off somehow. Perhaps a crab ripped it off as it was attacking or um, breaking apart the sea star. Well, what happens is this leg fell to the bottom and the, again, the cells at the site of injury are able to regenerate a whole brand new body and form more legs. So because this leg was able to do that, we're now going to create a brand new sea star. So regeneration here is happening and as a result, it's creating another sea star to live in the ocean. So that's how regeneration can be used to repopulate. Now, one of the famous stories about here on Long Island is that shell fishermen would go fishing and pull up their pull up their shellfish, and sea stars love to eat shellfish. They wrap themselves around it, they pull and pry the shells open and drop their stomachs into the shells and then digest the food and absorb the nutrients through their stomach. So as a result, this is killing off shell shellfish that are being harvested by fishermen. So what the fishermen used to do as they brought up their nets or their traps, whenever they saw a sea star, they would actually take a cleaver or some sort of knife and cut the sea star in half and then throw the two halves in the water. Well, eventually over time, their problem got worse because what they were actually doing is they were doubling the population of sea stars because each one of those halves grew into a sea star. That's asexual reproduction. Those are the characteristics of asexual reproduction and those are the different kinds of asexual reproduction. Thank you so much for your time. I hope this was helpful.